Hi guys, I decided to make a video on acute limb ischemia because I just never studied it before and I found this as a reason to actually start studying it. And Canva have this amazing whiteboard feature now. It's a new feature where you can make mind maps and stuff. So I decided to just make a mind map. Um, most of this lecture is from Teach Me Surgery. So I would recommend you check that out if you want any extra information. This is just going to be an overview of the most important things when it comes to acute limb ischemia because it is not that much of a common topic in exams. However, we always end up skipping it and when, it, when there are one or two questions that are very easy, we always forget the answer. So I hope this would help and save this problem. Um, we're going to be starting first by talking about the actual etiology of acute limb ischemia. And when it comes to the etiology, one thing about ischemia in general is that they're very similar. So if you know your myocardial infarction or your stroke, uh, acute limb ischemia doesn't sound that much different when it comes to etiology. Our etiology, we've got embolic, so it's an embolus from somewhere else, or a, uh, or a thrombus from proximal source, and it blocks this artery. And the risk factors are the very same risk factors for any other embolus, so atrial fibrillation, myocardial infarction, abdominal aortic aneurysm and prosthetic heart valves then we've got thrombotic thrombotic is that means that it's an atherom atheromatous plaque in the artery itself and the thrombus forms inside the specific artery and then we've got trauma but in this specific situation they mean compartment syndrome we'll be talking about compartment syndrome very briefly later on so when it comes to the um, acute limb ischemia your your clinical um, clinical diagnosis is very important or clinical like clinical evaluation is very important we'll start with the history and in the history I'm only going to be uh, highlighting the most important things which are the duration the onset and the risk factors the onset is usually sudden um, the risk factors you're screening for the risk factors for embolic risk factors for thrombosis and, and so on so you know them the modifiable risk factors hypertension um, diabetes these things as well as atrial fibrillation any other risk factors the duration is very important when it comes to acute limb ischemia. So if you had to ask only one question, it should be duration. Because duration is um, an indicative of when irreversible damage happens. So you've got six hours, and after six hours, it's irreversible. So intervention is very important to be very early when it comes to acute limb ischemia. Then we go to clinical features. The clinical features are known as the six P's of acute limb ischemia. That's how I remember, remember them, and it's probably like very easy to remember if you know it that way we've got the first p which is pain so the 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 the, lo the area is going to be painful especially if you move it it's going to be like on if you as a doctor like move the limb passively it'll hurt very much um there's pallor so it'll be paler or more pale than the other limb it's pulselessness um paresthesia where there's numbness or tingling perishingly cold <laughs> honestly this one's just them trying to force the, it to start with a p but if it's cold and if there's paralysis or weakness okay one thing you need to know is that not all six have to be there together for you, you to call it acute limb ischemia and sometimes if the person is presenting very early you might not find that many of them so for example the pulselessness and the paralysis are very late signs and you sh like if you've had them or you're you you reach that point point it's a very um, negative indicator or it's not a good thing so don't be worried or don't be looking for all six to think about acute limb ischemia so what do you do with this information this information is used for the classification and our classification is called the rutherford classification and it's very important because not only does it tell us the prognosis of the um, a, a limb but it also tells us the management um, so it has four components which are the sensory loss the motor deficit arterial Doppler and venous Doppler. Uh, a Doppler ultrasound is an ultrasound that shows you the flow in the vessels. So, or more like you hear the flow in the vessels, okay? So the first one, or rather for classification one, shows a viable limb, which means that this limb is still alive. There is no necrosis yet. And it has no immediate threat, which means that you can take some of your time when it comes to this limb. It's not a super top emergency. And that means um, that we can even take a more lenient management, which we'll be talking about in a bit. The sensory loss 
is none, so the person can still fully feel their limb. The motor deficit is none as well, so the person can still move. So there could be pain or something, but there's still sensation and motor. And when you do a Doppler, you can still hear both the arterial and the venous. We, uh, then we have two, rather for two classification, it's when there is some form of threat. There's 2A and 2B. When it comes to 2A, it's a marginally threatened limb. So it is threatened. We could lose this limb, but it's not immediate. You can, there is still some time. So you should be treating it as soon as possible, but it doesn't have to be immediate. So it's salvageable if promptly treated. The sensory loss is minimal or none. The motor deficit is none. So we can still move it. There could be some tingling. And the arterial Doppler is inaudible. So there is no arterial blood flow right now to the slim. However, there is venous return from it. So the venous Doppler is audible. And this limb is still currently okay. However, since the arterial is blocked completely, it could go into necrosis. It could become non-salvageable if we give it too much time. Then we have 2B. And for 2B, it's an immediately threatened limb. This is a limb that is currently alive, yes, but if you, if you don't treat it right now, this instant, it will go into necrosis. It will be irreversible. So it's salvageable if it's immediately vascularized. And this is the one that is a very top emergency. You're supposed to drop everything you're doing and make sure that you are salvaging this limb, okay? So the sensory loss is more than the toes. So it's not just the toes that are losing the sensations. Other parts of the limb is also losing sensation. Um, and this example is used when it comes to acute limb ischemia of the lower limb because that's the more common place for you to get acute limb ischemia. Um, the motor deficit is mild or moderate. So there is motor deficit. This person is not fully able, able to move their, their, their limb. So it's not fully paralyzed, but it is still very difficult to move. The arterial Doppler is inaudible, and this, but the venous is still audible. So as long as the venous Doppler is audible, your limb is still alive. You can still salvage it. The problem goes if you go to three. And three is an irreversible limb. So the, the limb ischemia is done. It's irreversible. There is nothing you can do to bring it back. There is permanent nerve damage, and it's inevitable. There's nothing you can do. It's not salvageable anymore. And that it has profound sensory loss, profound motor deficit or complete paralysis, and both the arterial and venous are inaudible. So this is a very big problem. If you've reached three, it's a big deal. Another thing to know, we talked about the clinical classification and that we're going to be doing a Doppler. There are other investigations that you could do. One of them is called the ankle brachial index or the ABI. And the ankle brachial index is basically a ratio between the blood pressure in the upper and the lower limb. And the normal is about 1 to 1.4. If you have more than 1.4, that shows um, peripheral vascular disease. So for example, in old people, their vessels are a lot more rigid than normal. Um, but if it's less than 0 0.8, that indicates that there is some form of arterial disease that's ischemic. Um, less than 0.4 shows that there's severe ischemia, and that's a very big problem. Um, another, ex um, another test we can do is a CT angiography. Uh, CT angiogram is the golden standard test. However, because it could take time to take this patient to go to the CT and so on, it's not necessary for us to be managing. A Doppler ultrasound, which is right in the bedside of the patient, is more than enough to classify this and to go straight to management. Remember, it's an emergency. So when it comes to management, we've got initial management, which we will do for everyone. And then we've got the management based on the classification. The initial management is that you put your patient on high flow oxygen, you establish IV access, and you give the patient heparin. Um, the type of heparin, there are some um, differences. So some say you can just give them any, um, like some say you should be giving them a bolus of, of heparin, okay? And then there's the conservative management and the surgical management. These two depend on the actual um, the actual classification. So if there is a Rutherford 1 or Rutherford 2A, so this is still salvageable, we're in a good place, we're not really worried that much, we would start with a conservative management, which would start a prolonged course of heparin with regular assessment. So we keep assessing the patient every once in a while to make sure that they're improving. 
And if there's no improvement, then we would move to the surgical management. Because in this situation, this patient is still okay, this limb still has um, some blood flow to it, we're fine. However, if it starts progressing to a worse classification, or it's just not improving at all, we'll go to the surgical management. So what about the surgical management? I'm only going to be mentioning the names of the surgical operations, however, not without, without the details, because it's a really long story, and you're not really required to know the details. Um, so the surgical management is, class, is considered in rather for 2A and 2B. So 2A, if it's failed medical treatment, or for example, if for any reason the heparin is contraindicated or so on. So it's a matter of clinical judgment more than anything. Um, then we go to the, emb- the, the, um, the surgical management options include an embolectomy, local intraarterial thrombolysis, bypass surgery, and angioplasty. And the last one is amputation. Amputation is, is only done or usually done in Rutherford 3 because there's irreversible limb ischemia and there's nothing you can do to return the blood flow. So the question that would come to your mind is, what would happen if we don't amputate a Rutherford 3 and do another surgical intervention? What's stopping us from doing an embolectomy? The problem is that if this limb has been dying for the past six hours and there's complete blockage of blood flow, it is not an area with blood. So this area has been built up, has been built with so many toxic materials and materials that are necrotic from the muscle that's dead. And if you unblock it suddenly, you're going to be first giving it oxygen, which would result in ischemic perf- uh, reperfusion injury. And you would also be giving those toxic materials blood flow back. So then they would come back to the circulation and they can actually be fatal. Um, for example, you have a lot of potassium in muscles. And if there's potassium being built up in this area, sudden r- return of blood flow could release a huge amount of potassium into the blood flow. And that could actually result in a cardiac arrest. So if it's a three, or in other words, if the limb has been dead for, or there's been ischemic for more than six hours, we don't go for embolectomy, we don't go for the other things, we just go for an amputation. It's safer because we're saving the patient. And that brings us to the complications of um, acute limb ischemia. The complications are all due to the reperfusion injury. So it can result in anyone, even if you're not um, a Rutherford 3. Um, you can get reperfusion injury due to the us bringing back the oxygen. So there's compartment syndrome, and that is due to the a lot of blood flow coming back, causing swelling and inflammation, and it's a tight compartment. So this blood is going to be collecting, and eventually the pressure will rise and increase and cause even more ischemia. Remember, we said that the compartment syndrome was a cause of ischemic, um, or a cause of the ischemia. So a lot of people, in, um, in some cases, like a lot of doctors, prefer to do a prophylactic fasciotomy when they're fixing um, limb ischemia to prevent compartment syndrome from happening. Um, fasciotomy is basically when you're cutting the, uh, a line or cutting an opening into the facial compartment so that it's not a closed compartment, so that the swelling would not result in the issue. Um, so prophylactic com- uh, fasciotomy is sometimes considered when it comes to management of acute limb ischemia. Another thing you can do is rab- uh, another complication is rhabdomyolysis and rhabdo is basically when the muscles are breaking down and again as i mentioned before muscles have a lot of potassium in them and if you're having potassium being sent back to the blood it can result in hyperkalemia and that can be very dangerous in all situations not just type 3. Um, also you can get acidosis and myoglobin itself in muscles can go to the kidneys and cause acute kidney injury so it's really important that no matter what the person is going through, after you fix the acute limb ischemia, don't send them home. They need to be monitored. Um, some even recommend being monitored in an ICU because you need to be monitoring their potassium, their, their acidosis or the acid level, pH level. You need to be monitoring their kidney functions. You need to be monitoring the actual limb for any signs of compartment syndrome so that the person doesn't deteriorate. Um, so that the person doesn't deteriorate. Um, I hope this was beneficial. Hope I managed to summarize acute limb ischemia in a really nice way. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more.